you've found your way to the Winning Tactics Podcast with host Adam Sinkis. Adam discusses winning tactics with small business owners and entrepreneurs, uncovering processes and introducing the tools and solutions for enhancing the bottom line. Thanks again for finding your way to the Winning Tactics Podcast and now your host, Adam Sinkis. Hello and welcome to another wonderful episode of the Winning Tactics Podcast. Today is an exciting today, exciting day, and not only is it our first show of, well, I guess second show of March, uh, but uh, it is also our 50th episode. So uh, super, super excited to uh, be celebrating my 50th, 50th episode, uh, huge, huge milestone. Um, so I'd like to welcome to the show, uh, PR expert, uh, marketing extraordinaire, book writer, human rights activist. <laughs> I, I think the list goes on and on and on. All that Tracy, crazy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy, welcome to the show. So excited to have you on. Uh, let's go ahead and start off by telling people a little bit about who you are and all of what you do, which I know is a lot. A lot. Yeah, I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you so much. Great show and great promotion and all that. I'm a PR girl, so I love to see the, the lead up and the great job that you did with this. Um, yeah, so the bio, like the bio says, I'm an international award winning publicist these days working across sectors, across borders, across industries with a hugely diverse selection of clients by diverse. I mean, you know, in terms of lifestyle, in terms of background, in terms of industry, in terms of vision, <laughs> you know, just all over the board. And um, yeah, that's what I do. And when it's not COVID, there's, you know, everything that people think about um, when it comes to PR, you know, VIP parties and launch parties and travel, that's all a part of it. But it's also a lot of strategy and thinking and 18 hour days and sitting at my computer finding, you know, whatever opportunity I can for clients, whether it's media appearances or, you know, awards and helping them to elevate their businesses and their messages the way I've been able to elevate mine essentially over the last nine years. Fantastic. Well, Welcome to the show again. So, so excited to have you on the show. Um, I, I, I myself am in the marketing world and absolutely love it. And I think there's just so much power to what marketing can do for your business, but there's a whole other side of the world uh, in marketing that's outside of just, you know, websites and print media and things like that. And that's, uh, that's, that's that PR world. And, uh, you know, I, I'd love to say that I, I know enough about it to be dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think that's the case for a lot of people because there, there's so many different ways that you don't have to uh, blow your entire marketing budget to, to get your name out there. So, um, Absolutely. What? And I mean, when I do, you know, once you hire me or a publicist, you know, we don't, we're not supposed to be asking you for additional, it's not like, you know, a, a marketing and advertising. Once you hire me, you're hiring me, you know, for my strategy, for my writing to convince, to compel those media sources that you're the, you know, that you're the, that you're the source that they should be speaking to, that you're the expert to speak to. So, uh, yeah. And then it's that third party, um, credibility that social credibility that you just can't buy so it doesn't matter how deep your pockets are you can't buy your way onto nbc you can't buy your way you know other than an ad in between in terms of being interviewed you just you've got to convince that newsroom you've got to convince whoever and so once you do that like i said that third party credibility really makes a difference i had one client tell me recently after literally after six weeks of working together she said you changed my business and you changed my life and I get a lot of accolades, like I was saying, but that's a pretty big one. So I said, well, what do you mean? And she said, literally after four articles, you know, at the beginning of our work together, investors were taking them more seriously at a point where, you know, uh, uh, 
we're talking about big money investment now. Mm -hmm. And then also, I hadn't even thought about that, but absolutely in terms of customers as well. If you have, you know, I mean, I, I work with celebrities and all kinds of stuff like that, but also entrepreneurs. And so just taking real estate is a perfect example because real estate agents have a hard time differentiating themselves. For example, every site looks the same. Everybody knows 10 agents, but you know, so if you go to two agent sites and one of them has been internationally quoted and there's three podcast interviews and they're in the newspaper and whatever, and the other guy just has your standard, hey, I, I sell houses, you know, he's going to be, the guy with the interviews, the guy with the media is going to be siphoning off customers, is going to be siphoning off. So even if, and if you're a corporate and not an entrepreneur, even it, mm -hmm. get closer to the corner office, get a raise, get a, all that stuff, because you now you're showing you, you have more value absolutely to the company. And they know that, you know, you're more value when you go and you put that on your resume as quoted in entrepreneur magazine, as seen in business times. I mean, it, it's clear that, you know, you're of more value. Yeah. You know, I think that's interesting, right? So, so, you know, the really what I gather out of this is the first critical step <clears throat> in this is to really put together this compelling story of why a media outlet should talk to you. And let, let's talk about some of those media outlets before we, before we dive into that, that story a little bit. Um, where are some of the places that, that people should be striving to push their PR out to? So it's really literally everything you can think of. If I, I, I'll tell you about a couple of different ways. People know about in a second. We'll go deeper, like you said. But people know about the traditional press releases, which where you're putting your messaging out to, you know, whoever you could think of, and you're waiting to see who picks it up. Then there's the opposite of that, which is a, a fifty percent of the way I get my clients in, which and which is free to entrepreneurs if they wanted to do this themselves, and if they understand the pitch, because it's all about that compelling pitch, right? But yep. if you understand the pitch, and if you understand the difference between advertorial and editorial, which is huge and difficult for entrepreneurs to get their mind around, because we know marketing and advertising to think what's valuable to the newsroom is a different story, right? But yep. if you understand what we say when we say that, and you're ready to go it alone. Check out uh, things like Help a Reporter Out, Harrow, and Source Bottle um, in Australia. There's another new one, too, that's similar to Harrow in North America wide. I can't remember the name of it, but same thing where reporters, I call it the opposite of a press release. So reporters who are on a deadline, and they're, you know, I'm writing for Reader's Digest with a deadline of Tuesday at 3. I'm looking to speak to real estate agents who sold mm -hmm. a house during COVID. I, you know, and some people might say, hey, I tried it and didn't work. I know the PR girl's talking about, but again, it's all about the pitch. I literally in one, in two weeks got one client in the New York Times and Reader's Digest using those. Another one I've got in, uh, who never had zero media. I got her in good housekeeping talking about I'm not my mental illness. And because mm -hmm. that's what she wanted to speak about, about mental health. And for the next year and a half, anything she wants to be in to speak about that, the doors are open because she yep. was in that glossy good housekeeping. Right. And she got that by, you know, hiring a publicist. And I gave her a super good deal because she was 26 years old, right out of the gate, you know, a life coach that it didn't have anything to differentiate herself from a million other life coaches. She did, mm -hmm. but no one knew it. So to get her some media attention and yeah, so that's literally, there's, so there's no, and you don't even have to start small and build your way up. If you're starting small, you can, because your local weekly, for example, and your local cable TV, they have a mandate to, to yeah. uh, you know, to highlight local people. So if you can think of a topical, a topical release is something where you're talking about a greater issue, like for example, COVID or Black Lives Matter will be good examples of things that are going to be repeated in the media. It's not going to be a one day story. It's going to be repeated, but because of your expertise, you know, maybe you're a, you know, whatever it could be like, you could be talking about, you know, you're a lawn care guy and how COVID has affected the lawn care industry or, you know, you're a diabetes expert and Black Lives Matter is everything. And so you're not going to get any media in right now without it. So maybe you talk about how diabetes affects that the black community more than other people and why some of you find that would be called examples of topical press releases. Mm -hmm. where you're you know there's something already going on you because of your expertise have something to add to a story and give a new voice to something that's going to be continued to talk about that's one way and there's a ton of places that you can it wouldn't be hard news at the 22 minute news broadcast but there's a lot of places where you can get profile like just like a nice puff piece profile of you as an executive look yeah. at your weekly city paper you know like there's often like a, you know what I mean? Like your little city paper, like yeah. the, again, sometimes it's a weekly, sometimes it's a monthly glossy, those kind of things. But don't be afraid to, you know, reach out to the big boys. It's hard to just 
we took to Reader's Digest info at and say, hey, that's not going to get you much. But if you look into, you know, if you look into where, like, again, help a reporter out in those places, you start to see what they're asking for. And the, the key with those two is not only the really good pitch in terms of your uh, elevator pitch about you as an expert, but also answer them quick. Don't write a whole book and wait three days to do it because by then they've got 500 answers or 50 and they're not going to go back and rewrite their article just because Tracy sent a great art, you know, the whole point is they need it quick. So a quick article that says who you are as an expert and what your angle is, sometimes, you know, not an article, a quick quote. Also, you can use like things like, um, medium to build up your thought leadership in terms of writing articles that you can point to if no one mm -hmm. else is publishing you yet. So there's all kinds of different ways, big and small. And what I counsel my clients, you know, they're really at this point, when you're starting a business, they're just as valuable, big and small. Because yeah, of course, NBC with a million viewers is, is awesome. But also a podcast that has 50 listeners, like, like the like matchmaker guy, the guy who invented matchmaker, which is a service that connects podcasters with guests mm -hmm. was on a somebody was interviewing me on a podcast and the week before they had interviewed the guy that started matchmaker and he was talking about the whole concept of people think oh small podcast big podcast. and he was saying number one there's some podcasts that you know live on you're on tv and it's done you're in a podcast it's on there forever and people continue to download it forever it continues yep. to help your seo but and gets more and more listeners all the time but also he was saying even if it was just those 50 original listeners the head of matchmaker said if you're an entrepreneur entrepreneurs unite if someone said to you, hey, you know, I'm having an event over here at my in my store tonight, and I'm going to give you the stage, going to be 50 people in the audience, I'm going to give you the stage to talk about your business for a minute, would you do it? Of course you would. Yep. So why wouldn't you do it to an audience of 50, and then it's going to multiply and multiply and multiply, right? So it's not thinking about things being small versus, you know, I'm excited when I get my client on a podcast. I'm excited when I get them on NBC. It's all, I want them to have all kinds of other people, not me, not them, talking about how great they are when you Google their name. Yeah, so I, that leads into an interesting thing, an interesting concept to me, and, and it's something that I, as a marketer, am very, very uh, aware of, but I think people uh, often overlook this is what happens when somebody go Googles your name, right? You know, um, you know, obviously there are names out there that, that are going to be hard to win real estate in. Uh, you know, if, if you already have a media personality that has that name, it's pretty hard to win real estate against that because they have a lot of things working for them. But um, that in being there though, then you're the second one in and then you're the biggest one in your market or that, you know, exactly. But, you know, but the reality is, is there's a lot of value to having your name all over Google, um, you know, in, in a lot of different ways. I know for me personally, I not only rank for my name, but I rank for my podcast name, The Winning Tactics. I rank for the companies that I'm involved with, mm -hmm. you know. So there's about 15 or so different ways that you can that, that my name pops up on Google. And that's that's really, really that solid. Um strategy, I think, you know, for, especially from a PR standpoint, because I don't know about you, but the first place I go when uh, it, outside of LinkedIn, when I'm looking for guests for my show, Google. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Or you might, or you go to Google to check after someone suggests themselves, like yep. I'll say, suggest myself as a guest or as a client. And I'll be like, go to Google or YouTube. Like now all I have to do it. Cause I've done like a hundred something podcasts, but, you know, more, I don't even know anymore since like June, you know, I've been using my tools. I'm strategic and smart and I use my COVID time well, right? I, and, it, and it has worked out. People, podcasters have hired me when I wasn't even thinking about that, you know, mm -hmm. and they recommended me. They So I wasn't, I was thinking of it just as a media, you know, another media because I'm a media girl, but I've actually learned and I don't even, I don't even place ads, but I've learned it's really good marketing right now. And certainly in terms of networking, if you do any business to business, like off the charts, because we're all in the same place right now, trying to figure out how to navigate this new landscape, right? Yeah. And yeah, we all no, have the same little screens, figuring it out. Super, super interesting. So so just to just to kind of summarize, right? So we've talked about obviously there's the big news stations and, and the you know in the big media outlets, major magazines, major news stations. Uh, you know, major, the, the, those big players. But, you know, you also mentioned uh, local, your, your local media outlets, your local uh, stations, newspapers, local business journals. Um, 
And you know, there's more too. Like think of the world online. You know, think Huffington Post kind of style, right? Yeah. May not be print, but I tell you, I was in Rolling Stone with it because I helped to. I helped to. This is really actually true. It sounds crazy. You may just bring it up out of nowhere, but I ran a 20 year campaign that was we didn't even think of a campaign. We were activists and advocates that helped ended up ultimately helped free an innocent man from death row. And um, what was I? Oh gosh, what were you just there before that? There's a reason I was saying that. Rolling Stone. You're talking about Rolling, Rolling Stone. Stone. That's why I was in Rolling Stone magazine. They covered him, Jimmy Dennis, in Rolling Stone magazine, and they talked to us and they talked about our, you know, re- you know, in the story or whatever. So of course we're all like, oh, we're gonna be in Rolling Stone. I've been in a lot of media, but Rolling Stone, you know, <laughs> we're like, am I gonna be on the cover? Can I send five copies to my mother? <laughs> and they're like, it's actually not gonna be the print issue. We're like, oh, but they're like, no, no, no. The print issue goes to like, don't quote me in the exact numbers, but essentially the print issue goes to seven hundred and fifty thousand. The online issue articles are seen by 7 million mm-hmm. and over and over and over and over and over and over and over. So it's actually way bigger. Right. And when your name yeah. pops up in the Rolling Stone or stuff like that, you know, it's pretty nice. Just like, I mean, like my clients, I got them in Reader's Digest. And these are things that you can build an entire career on as seen in Reader's Digest once. And then we go and do it again, do it and do it again, do it again. And they get that for, you know, they hire me for probably half the price because I give budget deals to entrepreneurs just so they can get their feet wet and understand it all, you know, because yeah. a lot of them don't have the conception of it. But, you know, so for, they probably pay me half the price that they would pay for one big newspaper ad or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, and literally, that's just one, one of the things I get them is, you know, now she's a columnist in Australia. And now this one's been, you know, in Houston Chronicle. Now we still have three more weeks to go in the month, you know. So yeah. it's like... It really is entrepreneurs just honestly. And the funny thing, here's a way to think about it too. 80 to 90% of entrepreneurs have no conception of it. If you're already thinking about anything you do with PR or getting in the news, you're way ahead of the guy next to you because a lot of them just don't conceive of themselves. They think of me, I'm just whatever. And then the people in media and the news or whatever, you know, are, are the elevated ones that get to be on TV. When really it's just they're the ones with the publicists or they're the ones who knew how to tell the media what they're doing. <laughs> yep. you know? No, exactly. I want to I want to take a step back because the Rolling Stone thing was really interesting to me. And I want to take a step back to that to say you weren't seeking to be in Rolling Stone for that. You were you were involved in a community and an activity for a greater good there. And I think that's an interesting um, differentiation to make there is that you weren't out to get in Rolling Stone. You were out just to make a difference in somebody's and life. It was a 20 year journey. Yeah. And it wasn't even a, a, a cause to celeb at the time. And we weren't publicist. We were literally, we'd had a little radio show when we were 24, 25 weeks, me and my husband, Dave Parkinson, who had a radio show and brought me on. That show had ended. Then it was the early days of the internet. So we were making our little page that would just talk about the things we cared about, you know, try to make. Mm-hmm whatever, make a difference. Like you still doing your twenties. We were in sales and just entry level marketing. We never, ever, ever, ever would have thought about PR or anything like that. And I was always able to write. I mean, like in personal life, I could write, but so we found out about this case and then nobody, you know, basically this guy, Jimmy Dennis had a little, he'd bought a little ad out of $20 or whatever to be on the internet saying, I'm not looking for pen pal. Don't want a girlfriend. This is literally the only way I could say, can I, you know, anybody can help me. And I don't know what drew us to, you know, cause we just had the radio show. So we were still in information gathering kind yeah. of perspective as well as being activists and ready to change the world. But we actually wrote a letter. Like we thought we didn't just like, we actually wrote a letter and sent it to death row of all places. And we're like, how innocent can this guy be? And he sent us back all this documentation. But then, well, wow, we had asked, we had asked out of nowhere and come into this person's life. And so now what do we do with this information? <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. So we were 29 years old. We didn't have any legal experience, anything. So my husband learned how to make a website. And I literally learned on the Alta Vista, how to, which is pre-Google, to make a press really? release. Like a literally yeah. four immediate release, three paragraphs. I found it, you know, not long ago, a year ago. It wasn't bad. And we'd sent it internationally. And it, it, within America, it didn't get much attention at the time because, it, you know, there was no all kinds of shows about wrongful convictions and it was difficult to get attention on something like that. But ultimately, over the years, we did. And a law firm came in that was looking for actual, factual innocence case. That's like a dream, like a unicorn. Mm-hmm. But because of the noise we'd made, a bunch of people said to them, oh, you're looking for factual innocence? Well, you better look at this. And when they did, they were like, huh, they took it on they did their work and ultimately their court work freed it but we in the court of public opinion and the court of helping him and <clears throat> being his support was like a 20 year journey and it was 15 years into that journey where i suddenly had a light bulb moment i went wait a minute when i was sitting down at my telesales job again i suddenly went huh wait a minute 
Hold on a sec. The last 15 years, because not just for that, but we ended up getting mouthy about the justice system in general, because we learned about that. What else is there? And yeah. so here we were, 29 years old. Again, no legal. And I look back now and I laugh. This, no legal training. No media training. 29 years old in another country even, right? And there mm -hmm. we are on court TV. CNN, NBC, talking with the with with Nancy Grace, with Dan Abrams, all these people, and no one ever let, said to us. I thought about it later because no one ever said, "Just wait a second, who, who the heck do you guys think you are?" They literally <laughs> talked to it. I think it's so funny, you know what I mean? Like because we were obviously presenting ourselves, which made me think later, "Ha, huh, wait a minute, that's kind of a market. That was a hot seat of the death penalty, for God's sake, you know. If I can yep. do that, I know how to deal with the media." And so maybe I can turn that into something where I can, you know, just take people who have good messages or, you know, a little small business or whatever. And so now it's literally, I have, you know, probably 50% entertainment or 40% entertainment right now with COVID, you're not a lot of going on with entertainment. And then yep. maybe 20% authors, public speakers. And then the rest are literally small business entrepreneurs across industries. And I mean, people are surprised when you hear that because they think celebrities and sports stars, you know, but when I look at my list, I mean, honestly, I have the real estate agent. I have the, you know, the chef, I have the, um, the, you know, the, so I call it celebrity stylist now because she is now. She's been in Reader's Digest and Oprah.com. And, but, it, you know, she was a stylist and a loctician. And so all these people who do. And, you know, when you think, oh, I couldn't get media for what I do. Someone, a, a podcaster made an excellent point when we were talking like this once. He said one of the most famous people in the world right now <laughs> is, I don't remember her name, but it's that lady who basically she organizes closets for a living. Mm -hmm. A minimalist lady, you know, she's all yeah. over the media. She wrote a book. It's a million dollar, billion dollar book. She's a Japanese lady. I can't remember her name, but she, that's what, you know, it's about. So her message is about, you know, she's a closet organizer and her message is about, you know, minimize your shit basically. Mm -hmm. She literally is a billion dollar brand now. So there's nothing, and it's like, you know, my celebrity stylist client, when she, she was uncomfortable when I first started calling a celebrity stylist, I said, well, number one, you do the hair of celebrities, right? So right now I'm not even calling you a celebrity stylist. If you're uncomfortable with that, I'm saying you're a stylist that does the hair of celebrities, you're a celebrity stylist. And then six months later, once I got her in Oprah and readers, digest.com and all that, then I'm like, see, now you're a celebrity stylist. She's like, Oh, I, no, I'm not. I'm like, yeah, you are. What do you think they mean when they say that? They mean internationally <laughs> quoted. There you go. Reader's Digest. Oprah.com. Yeah. Like, and now she's like, all right. And I'm like, own it. You know what I mean? So it doesn't matter what you do. You mow the lawns. You clean the toilets at the hotel. You have stories. You have. It's all about the angle, the pitch, the telling your story. and being Yeah, creative. you know, it's interesting, though, right? You know, through all of that, you know, it is about pushing your message out there. And that is super, super important. But there's I think there's creative ways that we can push our message out there. And in, in one of the ways that I think is really interesting um, is, is giving back to the community. Right. Being involved in, in community events is a great way uh, to, to push your brand and your message out there. And oftentimes, you know, the, the, the cost of that PR is is just a couple hours on a Saturday, uh, you know, helping out, you know. And the uh, connections you build and the goodwill you build and the, yep. you know, just the, you know, the good association with your name and, you know, and, and not just that, but I mean, like hard connections, hard, there are always hard benefits to doing stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't see them, you don't know who you're going to meet that, you know, you go and do a cleanup of the park <laughs> and you don't yep. know who's going to come out and who's super influential person is going to be impressed that you did that or that's not why you're doing it. But when you do good things, good things happen. It just I should have yep. been, you know, I should still be in sales, you know, just working for someone else and thinking, you know, when am I getting my paycheck? You know, that would have been my trajectory. But instead, again, international award winning publicists with non COVID, with the VIP parties, with the in 2019. And I stay heart centered. I mean, that's all, I'll throw that away in a New York minute if it was, you know, interrupting when I came, you know, my advocacy work, right? Yep. But, if, but in 2019, I, I got to, I was privileged to go in nine different, trip with eight different clients and one friend to uh, working on projects in five different countries on four different continents. You know what yeah. I mean? With the, like, that should not be at, at fancy hotels at, at, from the Mediterranean to the Caribbean in one year. Like what? That's not. And why I was just helping a guy on death row a minute ago, who by the way was released in 2017 and we, and, and then he's in Rolling Stone. Now he's recording music. He's had four amazing songs now and they're being, 
actually celebrated by you know music people and there's discussions about you know away from what he, he called me the other day and he said that his lawyer called him and said you know what i searched jimmy dennis online and instead of saying ex death row prisoner or innocent death row prisoner or whatever you know what it says now r and b artist like it always should have because he was taking you know that's what he was much be before mm -hmm. they throw him away for 25 years first thing he comes out starts doing it again because he's going to have that dream and we always say it's so funny because we were just in sales 20 something struggling in sales the people that helped him had no way to help him we weren't publicists we weren't anything like that right and yeah. then by the time he gets out we're about to be we weren't quite into we hadn't won the awards yet but we were working internationally so by the time he gets out now he's literally a recording artist being lauded in all these magazines. He was speaking at a panel with Ja Rule and Naughty by Nature a month ago. And, you know, we're international award-winning publicists. Hello. And guess yeah. what? Now he's my, my friend and my brother and my hero and my client now. So isn't that funny? Now we're literally like, at the end of these, I'm always like, so by the way, go in all streaming platforms, check out my client, Jimmy Dennis. He has a voice <laughs> now. <laughs> I've been talking, it's good. I mean, I, would, I, I was joking. He's just, we always end up talking about him in these podcasts. So I said, well, you know what? It's part of my story. And then I joke, you know, it's been 20, 20 years I was taught we were talking about this story because we were trying to get him out of prison. It's hard to mm -hmm. stop. So now, there's, now it's a good story. Yeah. But it's a no, business I, story too because, you know, I, I always bring it back to also what I had that funny light bulb moment suddenly. Wait a minute. I could monetize this. And everybody has, though you don't have the death row thing, everybody has something in their life that they really care about or they really love or they're good at or they're passionate at, but they just don't think about that as part of their nine to five. You're supposed to hate your job and your nine to five is, but I'm living a life that I should never have been able to access. I didn't go to school for this. I literally just started doing it. And then I said, well, if I can do that, look at what I did there, then I could, all I need to do, but guys, you want to start a business, you don't need $500 thousand dollars a million dollars unless you need to you know get product and all that but if it's a service oriented business all you need is one person to believe you can do it one person to hire you and then do a really good job for that person you know yep. what i mean and then one more and then and then all of a sudden boom 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 now you're doing it you're not just planning to do it you're not just saying you're gonna do it you're not saying someday you'd like to do it you actually are doing it you're gonna feel that and believe that and say hey look at me i'm a publicist now huh? i guess i'll do that some more <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, right. so let's pause for just a minute because i do want to uh thank my affiliate partner uh cowork hub virtual cowork hub virtual is giving consultants co coaches freelancers solopreneurs a sense of place in a remote work world it is a super super cool platform uh it is like zoom on steroids with a touch Ooh. of virtual reality built into it you get your own custom office you get video conferencing you also get the access to our conference rooms, which can host up to 50 people at a time in them. And you can see and hang out with the other folks that are on the platform. Go check them out, coworkhubvirtual.com. Uh, it is an absolutely amazing platform and so, so happy to be a partner with them. And appreciate all the knowledge you've dropped so far, we, we've talked about an absolute ton of stuff. Um, and, and I want to circle back because we talked about some of those some of those places outside of just the major media outlets. Let's talk about the HARO, uh, the helper reporter out and some of those services, because I think, you know, it, at least in my experience and in, in my businesses, that's like a really good low hanging fruit that doesn't take a ton of time. Um, but like you mentioned, it does take a little bit of finesse to to get get through there. Um, so let's talk about some tips for those. What what can people do to help uh, help make sure that their content is being seen by by those people in those services? So number one, some of these are little things. Some of these are big things. But just in the way that I the way I approach a hero. Right. So number one, some of them will have the reporter's name there, Bob Smith of Reader's Digest. If it gives you that per reporter's name, then make it personal. And in the in the uh, subject line, right. And this is not going to get you the thing, but it may get you notice if you got 150. Right. Put, hey, Bob. And then don't just have because otherwise it's going to be just re hero response, re hero query like everybody else. Right. So mm -hmm. have one that stands out. Put something like, hi, Bob. Or if it's not, Bob, you know, or like whatever. Or if you don't have the name, something like, you know, fantastic source for your hero query on the power of PR. Fantastic. So, or you know what I mean? Or like yep. something along those lines to make it different because otherwise it's going to be the same subject line as everything else. Right. So that's a one little thing to make it stand out if it's big. Number two is like, a, is do it quick. Don't, I mean, don't do it like crappy, 
But I mean, don't uh, people overthink? Like I know when people are starting to get used to the hair, I'll send to them. They'll be like, oh, three days later, they're still, you know, no, 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 no. They want what they want. There is one of two things. They either want the yeah, they either want like perfect writing that they're gonna, you know, put directly in there. But in that case, it's only gonna be you're not writing their article for them. In that case, it's a quote, it's like a quote or two. I've seen people write like literally 800 word answers. I'm like, it's a quote. They're writing the article. You just yep. wrote an article. You know, so um, and so make sure, yeah, it's a quote if, if it's written. In a lot of cases, they really just want to know what the angle would be if they give you a call. So what, you know, who you are and what you would say, essentially. So it's quick and easy. Uh, not easy, sorry, but it's quick and, and you don't suffer over it for three days. And then your little about you pitch. It's not a resume. It should be just about a paragraph, no longer. It's not all the things in your resume. It's the things that make you a compelling guest. So a couple of things that show, you know, why you're an expert, but also language, like he makes a compelling segment speaking about, you know, like you, for example, I'd be like, he speaks, he speaks nationally or internationally every day to entrepreneurs across industries. And so he has his finger on the pulse of what entrepreneurs today during COVID are thinking and what they're doing and how they're, and that would be how I would frame you just from the little I know about you so far, right? So, yep. and that way, whatever you're talking about, oh, okay, that's your expertise. You have this expertise. It's you. So you, you, it's all about that pitch and then about answering what specifically what they're asking, following those instructions, doing it quick and volume. You know, you're not going to get every single one, but if you do answer like 10 of them right or 15 of them right, you're going to get one or two. And it, it only has to be one to be, you know, Reader's Digest or something. Yeah. And then once you get that one, it's, you know, then you can be, you add to your little pitch as seen in Reader's Digest, as seen in, you know. And then that gets you more of the, you know, like when I started suggesting myself, I've been focusing on all my clients, obviously. And when I started suggesting myself to a couple of podcasts, just because they looked interesting back in June, July, I had my bio, which is impressive, like, you know, but I didn't have a list of all these podcast appearances. I had some articles written about me and all that, but I had not been doing them myself. I've been sending my clients to do them. So then I had one or two or three. And then I, I looked at my early pitch and then I had four or five. And now I literally have like 50 that you can listen to another 50 books. So it's like, when I send my thing to a business podcast now, 99%, like, honestly, I'm surprised if they come back with a no. Mm -hmm. Like, it does not happen very often. It's very rare for them because I can speak across industries. Like, mine is a wide one. It's it's not like, because I can speak to anybody in any industry about how to build your brand. So it's not like I'm a specific service provider that, you know, you'd only be interested if you're like an auto repair or something, right? So not everybody would have that. But by the same token, it's because I'm finding those opportunities. I'm pitching myself. I'm just, you know, every award I get, every whatever, you have to be not afraid to add that stuff. That's but if you don't have it, you don't need to wait for that either. You just say, hey, I'm an expert. And you are, because like I said the other day to someone, you know, we challenge, oh, am I really an expert? Are you taking money for what you do? Then you probably <laughs> think you're an expert. Otherwise, yep. you're like a ripoff, right? No, you're, you're serving customers, so you are an expert. You also believe you're an expert or you wouldn't be doing that. Now, transfer that belief to media. It's not scary. You know, it might be outside of your comfort zone, but we're all, we all succeed when we push ourselves a little outside of our comfort zone. Awesome. Fantastic tips there. I want to shift to uh, talking about local local media outlets, you know, so your local newspaper, you know, local business journals, local news stations. Mm -hmm. What are some tips to get uh, in front of those audiences? Some of those things are great for what I, you know, little puff piece kind of profiles that I mentioned, like your local business journals and that kind of thing, like especially city, like when we were talking about city magazines, you mm -hmm. know, very often they'll have, they don't, they're not, they're like a monthly, they're not covering hard news. They're covering the people Yep. you know, the places that the, the, the influencers, the whoever. And, um, yeah, like, and, you know, like, I mean, I'm in Hamilton right now, which is near Toronto and there's a little, and this is the same everywhere though. Cause I've been all around the world, I've been in Washington DC. I've been everywhere. Right. And they all have something like Washington DC. There's like seven or eight or nine. There's like Washington DC has like a million of them. I always grab all the free papers everywhere I go. And in DC, I was like, oh my God, I had like an armful of like 40 free papers to take home because I like to read them all from every political angle, every side, you know, and of course DC, everybody's got their, <laughs> but in most cities, it's not that overwhelming. Most cities they'll have, or even your little local, like Beverly Hills, for example, in, in Los Angeles, um, 
you know, like LA, you know, that's one came to mind because when I walked around Beverly Hills, I grabbed their little, I was like, oh, look, even they have one. And they have a couple, the Beverly Hills Courier, the Beverly Hills Times, which are hyper local. They, they, yeah. and, and Beverly Hills is like six blocks, you know what I mean? And yet, yeah. even it, it has, and you go in, it's not all, and the Beverly Hills Courier, it's not all about celebrities. It's literally a community paper, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, Every single place has that. Find out yours and present yourself as a. And honestly, you do, it's like you use those compelling words. You know, he's a visionary business person. He's you know bringing attention to. So there's read other profiles and read and that. And you know, here's where having a publicist, even for a month, if you have money, if you have a marketing budget, slice a little bit off of it for like one month, for three months. Call me. I work anywhere in the English speaking world, or you know, any publicist should not get advertorial or you know. But you know, honestly because you will literally open, it will change your way of thinking. You will be like, whoa, even if you just do it for the one month or the three months and you let them craft a pitch for you, your pitch, and they and you see, you know, where they kind of put you, you'll be like, oh my God. Like my clients tell me they I changed their life. They never saw, you know, they're just, now they're like, whoa, whole world opened up. Now they, you know, the way people respond, people say, come from the you know 20 year their families even noticing what they're doing now people they never heard from 20 years as well as investors and potential customers you get seen people see what you're doing and that's really usually valuable right yeah no absolutely absolutely important there um and i and i think for most small businesses you know those are going to be those are probably going to be the two primary sources at least to start off with if, if you're new to really pushing a pr game um you know so I, I think those look are at the hero because then you can get your ha handle on that. You know, it's cool. You can jump right in. Boom. I'm in good yeah, housekeeping. They, <laughs> so. they send, hero sends me uh, like six emails a day. So, <laughs> yeah. And it's yeah. a job. Like I said, that's, I spent a good two hours going through because I got, you know, 40 clients. So I yeah. spent a lot of time going through the hair or going through the pod match, the matchmaker and all that stuff. And that's literally half the game. The other half is crafting the press releases to find, you know, the media and get reach out to the media sources where we want to suggest stories. And then she, then that person is the star because we suggested the story, you know? But. Yeah. No, I think, and I think you hit on another one and here you are, right? Podcast is another great, uh, great, uh, low hanging fruit. There, there's several sites out there to uh, to find podcasts, find podcasts that are that are interesting to you. Watch an episode or two, and, and you'll be honest. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest with you. They, you, most people, as long as you can formulate some sort of articulate story about who you are and, and what you know, um, most people can find at least a few podcasts to be on. Yeah, and that's the thing. It depends I mean, because there's a huge range, right? Like I'm on some where it takes six months before, you know, you're booked and six months later you're on their top 10 Apple podcasts with 500,000. And then there's the other one that people are just starting out on the third one and they're thrilled. Oh my God, this international award, you know, but like I said, yeah. I do that because I show my clients too. It doesn't like, you know what? Like, again, you never know where the audience, you never know who you get. If the show is interesting, if it's either, if it's well produced, and look professional, right? Because I don't put my clients on crap, and I don't go on crap, right? But if it's all well produced and look professional, you know, oh, oh, you know, and or they have a, you know, and or they have a really interesting angle, and they're doing, you know, so that's interest. That's good. Like it, it's, you know, you know, I mean, I never put me, my clients, or me on something just like, hey, Bob and John talk about whatever, you know. Yeah. There's a lot of those too. There's no point in that, you know. We can get better than that. Not that I mean, let them do it. That's cool. But you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. But, no, it's but it's there's a lot. If it's well produced, it's a huge value. Just even to get that piece where you're talking, and you know, it's gold. Yep. Yeah. No. It's you. You know, talking. I think oftentimes, you know, far exceeds words uh, uh, written on a piece of paper because it shows not only that you know what you're talking about, but you also get your personality out there too, which I think is is a huge piece as well. People um, like to work so. with people they like. Yep. So, you know, I, I, I am a firm believer, you know, not just because I run a podcast, but because I I've received business from several podcasts that I've been on. Um, you, you know, you don't even expect it, right. You're just, you're yeah. not even, that's not even the plan. You're just talking someone. Yeah, I know it's, that's not, I'm telling all my clients now. No, seriously, I'm booking you guys on podcasts. It's not second to other media. It's a whole other thing. Now it's media plus do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, yes, and it is. It is really, honestly, the new way people are consuming media and information now. Um, so, 
Absolutely love it. I love. I always love to wrap up the show with some final thoughts uh, because I like to. I like to take give my listeners something that they can take away from the show and really put into action uh, in their business to get them started. And obviously today getting started on PR. So I leave the floor to you for what are your final thoughts? What's that one thing that people can take away from this show and, and put into action? Um, I think, okay, again, I hate to sound like the Pollyanna or, you know, belief in yourself, people, but it's true. It really does come down to self-belief. You can't do anything without that. So I, I always say that this is the trifecta, which is, you know, believe in yourself, you know, build up yourself, truly build up yourself so that you can build up your brand, make your million dollars. That's what you're motivated to do. Free the guy from death row, get get your messaging out, whatever you're doing, you can be successful at that. And then once you've done that, but honestly, if you, you know, seriously, if you build up yourself, build up your brand, make your money, whatever. And then once you've made your money and made those platforms, build up your community or build up something you care about or find, because that's ultimately what it's all about too. And that's not just Pollyanna, but you know, you could be 30 years old, 40 years old, you made your million dollars, you made your platform. And I tell you, it feels pretty empty when you get there. If you're not finding something else to, to motivate you, once you've motive, you know, you've that money's motivated you. Now you get there. Now what, what was your whole life about? Now I got it. You want to leave your legacy, right? So whether it's something, you know, we all have something we care about, whether it's free to start, you know, the starving children or free or whatever, and hopefully not a political thing, not a whatever, but a help in the world kind of thing, a helping mm -hmm. people thing, a helping bottom line, because people are the bottom line. And if we don't take care of each other, then nobody takes care of us. So, you know, we can do business that way. I built a successful international award winning business on people being the bottom line and the money's coming in. Absolutely fantastic. I love it. Where can people find you? So obviously, on the interwebs. <laughs> obviously all over the interwebs because you put yourself out there. But, uh, but where can they find me and reach me? Yeah. yeah. Um, LamoriMedia.com is my website. They can reach me also, Lamori, and hopefully you'll spell it. Yeah, you got the spelling right there. LamoriPR at gmail.com is my email. Um, the, 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 Instagram is Tracy Lamori PR Media. Um, Facebook, my name Tracy Lamori. And you can also reach me on that old technology, you know, the hey, Graham Bell the telephone <laughs> thing um, in Toronto, which is, you know, Canada wide, 289 788 5881. I have a Beverly Hills number because I have as many clients stateside. I don't have an office in Beverly Hills. Authenticity and genuine matters. It just kind of rings and comes through to me in Toronto. <laughs> but I do have a Beverly Hills number. And that number is 424-444-8052. So you can reach me at 289-788-5881, the Toronto number, or Beverly Hills, 424-444-8052. They both come right through to me. And we can have a 30-minute consult about what you specifically do. And if you're thinking, well, you know, not me, though. I couldn't get media. Absolutely you. We'll talk about it. Fantastic. Absolutely love it. I appreciate your time, effort, and energy hey. today. Uh, fantastic show. As always, we thank those that uh, hopped on for the live show and listened along with us for your time today. And as and you can catch the replay on all the major podcast networks, as well as YouTube uh, and LinkedIn and Facebook. Uh, check us out. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button on your favorite platform uh, so you don't miss the next show. I appreciate it, and we will see you all next week. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week. Well, that wraps up yet another episode of the Winning Tactics Podcast. You can find Adam on both the LinkedIn and Facebook platforms. And to support the show and ensure the success of the podcast, would you kindly consider visiting Patreon forward slash Adam Sinkus? We greatly appreciate it. And until next time, from the Winning Tactics podcast, remember, culture is how your team behaves when no one is looking. Take good care and thanks for listening.